What is the biggest problem with Israel's Iron Dome system? Each Israeli interceptor missile costs about $50,000. But what if Israel had a cost-effective way to stop the rockets? We begin in the Middle East, where Israel is bolstering its air defense capability. The Iron Beam. Iron Beam. The high-power laser system has been completed and will be ready for full operational use by the end of the year. What happens on a battlefield when a weapon fires at the speed of light? What changes when the cost to defend a city drops from tens of thousands of dollars per interception to pennies? What do missiles, rockets, drones, and mortars do when they discover the rules of warfare have been rewritten in an instant? And what does it mean for the world when the first real combat-ready laser defense system in history becomes operational? Not in theory, not on paper, not in a classified lab, but in the hands of a military fighting daily threats. On December 30th, 2025, Israel's long-awaited Iron Beam, known internally as Megan Orr, Shield of Light, will officially enter service with the Israel Defense Forces. It's a date that defense analysts have circled, debated, doubted, and obsessively tracked for years. A date that some believed would never arrive. A date that the aerospace world quietly recognizes as the true beginning of directed energy warfare. This video dives into how Israel pulled this off, what the Iron Beam is capable of, how it will transform strategy in the Middle East, how it integrates with Israel's multi-layered shield, and what it means for countries already lining up behind the scenes to get a piece of the technology. Because whether you support it, oppose it, fear it, or simply want to understand it, the truth is this. The age of laser warfare has begun, and nothing will be the same after December 30th. The Countdown – Iron Beam Deployment For more than a decade, Iron Beam was spoken of like a promise that always seemed five years away. In 2014, it debuted as a concept weapon. In 2019, it was introduced again, upgraded, refined, but still a work in progress. In 2022, Israel announced the real tests had begun. And then in 2023, laser experts insisted it would take years before it became militarily viable. But behind the scenes, something else was happening. Something faster. Something more ambitious. Something Israel pushed forward at a pace that stunned even its closest defense partners. Throughout 2024 and 2025, the Iron Beam underwent continuous field trials. Some public, most classified. These weren't simulations. These weren't lab conditions. These were real weapons fired at real threats. Rockets, mortars, artillery shells, low-flying UAVs, and drones maneuvering like hostile swarms. By mid-2025, reports quietly emerged that the system was achieving reliable intercepts, hitting moving objects at the speed of light melting through metal mid-air and neutralizing targets before sirens could even sound. The pressure mounted. The rocket barrages from Gaza and Lebanon intensified during the year. Drone tactics evolved. Militias experimented with faster launches, wider dispersal, deadlier payloads. The IDF needed a game-changing line of defense, one that didn't rely on expensive missile interceptors, one that could fire endlessly, day or night, and never run dry. And so, on a date coordinated quietly between the Ministry of Defense, Raphael Advanced Defense Systems, and the Directorate of Defense R&D, December 30th, 2025 was chosen as the day the world would officially cross into a new age. Not a demonstration, not a prototype, not a test environment. Fully operational deployment. Iron beam batteries would be delivered, crew training would be finalized, integration would be complete, and the laser system Israel had pursued for years would finally stand guard over cities, borders, bases, and strategic assets. This wasn't hype. This wasn't PR. This was Israel's direct answer to thousands of real attacks. It wasn't about the future. It was about survival, right now. The Weapon Capabilities of Iron Beam the Iron Beam is not science fiction, but the first time you hear its capabilities, it feels like it could be. 
a high-energy laser system that fires multiple tens of kilowatts of coherent light directly at incoming threats. Intercepts occurring at the speed of light, where the only delay is the fraction of a second required to track the target. A firing cycle that generates little to no explosive debris. A system that, once powered, has near zero cost per shot, meaning the most expensive part of the interception is the electricity required to fire. It's a system designed for everything that saturates Israel's defenses, most frequently. Short-range rockets, mortars, artillery shells, drones, including those modified for kamikaze strikes, and low-altitude threats attempting to bypass radar. Missiles cost tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands per interception. Rockets cost hundreds to manufacture. Mortars cost even less. The economic imbalance has always been glaring. Iron Beam destroys that imbalance instantly. Every laser pulse is cheaper than buying a bottle of water. Yet every pulse must melt, burn, rupture, or detonate a real threat in midair. And it does. Iron Beam's targeting system locks onto projectiles moving hundreds of meters per second, regardless of their shape or flight path. Beam must hold steady on the target long enough to heat a critical structural point, warhead, casing, or flight control, until it fails. And because this heating process occurs at thousands of degrees Celsius, the entire interception looks almost instantaneous. No smoke trails, no loud explosions, no spiraling debris fields, just a flash, a pop, and an incoming threat that disappears before it finishes its arc across the sky. For years, countries believed lasers couldn't handle environmental challenges like humidity, dust, or cloud cover. Israel had to solve every one of these problems. They engineered adaptive optics, atmospheric compensation algorithms, beam stabilization technologies previously reserved for space telescopes, and power modules capable of firing repeatedly and rapidly, even under desert conditions. By 2025, these solutions converged. Tests confirmed what skeptics had once called impossible. Iron Beam works in the real world, in real weather, against real targets, in real combat environments. And it fires again and again and again, without worrying about ammunition stockpiles or multi-million dollar resupply missions. This is why analysts insist Iron Beam is the first weapon in decades that fundamentally alters the cost structure of modern warfare. Because it gives the defender a cheaper weapon than the attacker. Because it flips the battlefield economy upside down. Because it forces adversaries to rethink every tactic. The truth is simple. If missile defense was Generation 3, directed energy defense is Generation 4. The Shift Strategic Impact Brigadier General Daniel Gold, one of the architects behind Israel's national defense technologies, said it bluntly. Iron Beam will fundamentally change the rules of engagement on the battlefield. He didn't say it lightly. He wasn't exaggerating. Gold has been at the core of Israel's most ambitious projects, Iron Dome, David's Sling, Arrow, and advanced C4I systems. When he speaks about a paradigm shift, militaries around the world listen. The strategic impact unfolds across multiple layers. First, psychological warfare collapses. Rocket fire from hostile groups has long been a tool of political messaging, a way to create panic, disrupt daily life, and overwhelm air defenses. But when a laser silently eliminates a projectile faster than civilians can react, the psychological effect reverses. Instead of fearing the attack, the attacker must fear irrelevance. Second, saturation attacks lose their power. Missile defenses like Iron Dome are extremely effective, but they rely on expensive interceptors. Large, coordinated barrages are designed to drain those interceptors. Lasers cannot be drained. As long as power flows, Iron Beam fires. Saturation becomes meaningless. Third, the economics of conflict are rewritten. A $300 rocket no longer forces a $50,000 interception. A $3,000 drone no longer forces a $20,000 missile launch. The imbalance collapses instantly. 
Israel becomes the first country in history to field a system that makes defense cheaper than offense. Fourth, adversaries are forced back into the drawing room. Every group, militia, and hostile military that relies on low-cost projectiles must reinvent their tactics. Faster drones, higher trajectories, metallic shielding, decoys, swarm optimization. None of it matters when lasers don't need to match the speed or quantity of the incoming threat, only the target lock. Fifth, the regional deterrence landscape evolves. The Middle East is already an environment where state and non-state actors test new technologies rapidly. Iran's drone proliferation, Hezbollah's precision rockets, Houthi long-range UAVs targeting distant assets. Now, a laser system enters this environment with no traditional countermeasure. It changes not just defense, but diplomacy. Not just tactics, but negotiation leverage. Not just battlefield dynamics, but national posture. For Israel, surrounded by threats with expanded arsenals, the ability to neutralize cheap threats cheaply isn't just an advantage, it's survival. And for the international defense community, Iron Beam signals something else. The era when lasers were theoretical is over. The Network – Integration with Iron Dome and Layered Defense Iron Beam isn't replacing Iron Dome. It isn't replacing David's sling. It isn't replacing Arrow or any other system. It's becoming the missing piece. Israel has built the world's most intricate layered defense network. A web of sensors, radars, launchers, interceptors, and battle management systems capable of responding to threats from multiple distances, directions, and altitudes. Each layer has limitations. Each layer has strengths, but each costs money, logistics, and planning. Iron Beam adds a new layer, one with unlimited firing potential. Short-range threats have always been the hardest to intercept economically. These include cheap rockets fired from a few kilometers away, mortar shells launched from behind cover, improvised drones built with off-the-shelf components, swarm UAV attacks, low-altitude threats that cross tiny distances before hitting targets. Iron Beam addresses all of them. Iron Dome still intercepts threats that lasers can't handle due to weather or tactical complexity. David Sling handles medium-range missiles. Aero systems handle ballistic threats, but Iron Beam fundamentally conserves missile interceptors. Instead of wasting a high-end Tamir missile on a low-end mortar shell, the laser takes the shot. Instead of overwhelming Iron Dome batteries with dozens of cheap drones, Iron Beam zeroes them out. This conservation dramatically extends Israel's ability to sustain prolonged escalations. Integration is seamless. The radars that track incoming threats feed their data to Iron Beam. The battle manager that assigns targets prioritizes which system fires. The command network determines which interceptor, laser or missile, neutralizes which object. And because lasers are silent and instantaneous, Iron Beam redefines reaction time. For the first time in Israeli defense history, the cheapest threats receive the cheapest answers. But without sacrificing performance, reliability, or safety. This is why defense officials say that Iron Beam isn't just a weapon, it's the glue that completes the shield. The world watches. Global interest in laser defense. By the end of 2024, Israel's defense exports hit a record $15 billion, cementing its position as the eighth largest arms exporter on Earth. And that was before Iron Beam entered service. Countries across Europe, Southeast Asia, and even the Middle East were already purchasing Israeli systems. The Abraham Accords opened doors for states like Morocco, Bahrain, and the UAE to buy advanced interceptors radars, and electronic warfare platforms. Now, with Iron Beam becoming operational, global demand is skyrocketing. Not for the full system, yet. But for the expertise, the components, the optics, the analytics, the power management, the algorithms, and the integration logic behind it. Defense ministries worldwide are asking the same question. If lasers work in Israel, when can they work here? And Israel knows it. 
Iron Beam is not just a national shield, it's the blueprint for the future. Behind the Curtain – International Partnerships Some partnerships are public, some are quietly developing behind closed doors. Taiwan, facing escalating aerial and missile threats, is studying Israel's layered defense model closely. Its military wants to understand how radar, AI tracking, and laser systems can protect dense urban regions against saturation attacks. India continues expanding its cooperation with Israeli firms, manufacturing advanced drones, optics, and sensor packages, building domestic capacity while absorbing Israeli technological doctrine. European states monitoring rising drone activity, from Ukraine to the Middle East, have begun formal inquiries into laser defenses. And while nobody expects Iron Beam to be exported quickly, the world knows the direction modern defense is heading. The future is cheaper intercepts, faster reaction times, and technologies that make traditional barrages obsolete. This is the international impact of a laser that fires at the speed of light. Not merely defense contracts, but a philosophical shift in how nations think about war itself. The Dawn of a New Age December 30th, 2025 is more than a date. It's a fault line in military history. Before Iron Beam, missile defense was a game of costs, logistics, and stockpile management. Every attack forced a financial decision. Every barrage was a test of endurance. After Iron Beam, defense becomes sustainable. Interceptions become inexpensive. Lasers take their place alongside missiles radars, and EW systems. And the battlefield becomes a place where speed-of-light weapons redefine every tactic, every strategy, every assumption. This is not science fiction. This is not the future. It is happening now. Israel's laser shield is real. It is operational. And the world is officially entering the era of directed energy warfare. If you want more deep-dive videos like this, covering emerging technologies, classified programs, global defense shifts, and the secret projects reshaping the future, make sure to request your next topic now. The world is changing faster than ever, and the next breakthrough is already being built somewhere behind the scenes. Tell me the next subject you want exposed, decoded, and revealed, because this story is only the beginning. Stay blessed and stay curious.